This true flat plywood comes in bolt size and it also comes in Nova Plus size. I'll give you my settings for true flat for the new Nova Plus 60 watt RF CO2 laser. Today on Laser Nug. Okay, let's jump into my materials library for the Nova Plus. We'll run ourselves down here and find true flat. I've got a cut setting for you using the two and a half inch stock lens. I'm just going to leave each setting up for a few seconds. And if you're interested, you can just pause the video. My engrave settings. And I've got a score setting. I actually have two score settings. One, if you like to mask your true flat, especially if it's the linen or it's your bright white and a separate setting if you're not using a mask. Although the true flat cleans up really quick with just water and a cloth, if I'm doing something really detailed or a lot of cuts that are close together, it's just easier sometimes for me to mask it so I don't have to try to wipe in between things. If you'd like to stick around a few more minutes in the second half of the video, we're going to grab some true flat, a simple design, and we're going to run it through the Nova Plus for both engraving and cutting. Test out those settings. I've got my two pieces here. One is going to be in the maple true flat. It's one of my favorites. And then we're going to put a black border around it. It's an eight and a half by 11 plaque with a bit of a design on it there. Because I've got the bigger bed size, I don't have to cut one piece at a time. I can actually put them both into this Nova Plus at once and group them and put the two boards in side by side or end to end in this case. Let's just check our settings on my fill for the engrave. Let's assign that. 1,000 millimeters per second at 60. And let's get my cut settings here. We'll assign that to my red layer. And that's at 15, yes, and 65. So we're good. Let's group these together. Fire up the laser, get my boards in, and let's cut our piece. We'll drop our maple in, our black below it. I'm really starting to appreciate having so much extra space in this work bed. Don't get me wrong, I love my bolt, but it's kind of nice to be able to cut out all of your pieces at once out of different materials without having to wait and change materials and start the next part of your design. Let's set our autofocus. Set our origin and run our job. We'll pull up our file, press enter. Because I'm running multiple pieces of material at once with different designs, I'm going to be using absolute coordinates instead of user origin on this file. That way I'll make sure that each of my pieces on the different materials lines up correctly. That means I don't need to set an origin. I'm just going to frame the piece, make sure it's going to cut properly, and then we can start the job. Okay, we should be good. Let's fire it up. I'm running my air at about 0.4 PSI for my engrave on this true flat. Seems to provide a pretty clean engrave. Not a lot of cleanup anyways with water, but it's nice when it comes out without a whole lot of haze or a whole lot of debris. The controller on this Nova Plus is very different than the one I have on the Bolt. It's kind of a different interface, but it's easy to start catching on to. I noticed a couple of interesting differences. You can see here, hopefully in the camera, the cursor is showing you where in the design the laser head is and which way it's moving. It also, when I'm just doing an engrave, it will often show me the traversal moves 
In other words, the red lines that show you where the laser needs to slow down and stop and speed up again. And you can see it on the screen, so you kind of get a judge as to how much extra distance it needs, especially if you're going at a high speed. And of course, your settings come straight from Lightburn into this right-hand corner. And you can see my two different layers, and you can see the settings that came out of Lightburn that the laser or the Nova Plus is using right now. I'm running my cut line at about 1.7 to 1.9 PSI on my air pressure. If you look closely, you can see that the different design that they've used for the holes or the intake for the exhaust, as well as that six inch vent, really exhausts that smoke out the back. And there's nothing in the room here. You can see it inside the unit, but you can also see the directional as it heads to the back of the unit. Nice. And a relatively clean engrave. Let's grab some water in a rag and clean them up and then we'll put them together. Having that extra bed space means I can put all four different colors of materials in there and I can run four full plaques all at the same time. Whereas with the smaller bed size on the bolt I can only do one at a time or one piece of material at a time. That's all it takes. I'll just run a clean cloth and that's all it takes to clean this true flat. Nice clean engrave. Let's put it together. If I might offer, if you're going to be doing any types of pieces that are going to become production pieces, in other words, you're going to be making multiples of them over time, always try to make yourself a little jig. It's a simple jig. It's quarter inch MDF. You don't need plywood or anything heavier. And this way, when you're layering your pieces, such as your frame on top of your picture, you know for sure all of your corners are going to come out perfectly square. One of the other nice things about the true flat especially with a small plaque or a sign design like this, it's finished both sides with, and it has an acrylic coating on it. So you don't have to worry about painting the back or making it look nice or putting another piece in behind because it's two-sided. Slide that into our jig, press down, a little pressure for a few seconds just to get it to stick and there we have it there you have it she's all wrapped up simple easy reasonably priced materials which provides for a reasonably priced product to your customer humorous signs and plaques on the nova plus another helpful tip i'd like to share with you especially since i've seen a couple of youtube videos lately where people have dragged their laser head across their honeycomb before I shut my machine off for the day, I always drop my Z table, at least an inch or two, because I don't know what type of material might be in there tomorrow or later today. And I always run my laser head out the back and I press the origin button. That sets the last known origin. So when you turn the machine on the next time, the machine is naturally going to do its initialization and then it's going to scream that head back to whatever the origin was of the last job you did yesterday. This way I've set the origin out of the, the main bed, the bed is dropped and that 
basically minimizes or removes any potential danger of that laser head hitting the honeycomb or any other type of a collision. Well, that'll wrap it up for another video. I hope you found the tips as well as the settings helpful today. So many of you have left comments saying that you've ordered a Nova Plus, and I'm sure you're as excited as I was, and I promise you won't be disappointed when it gets there. Have a wonderful week, be kind to each other, and have fun with that laser. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.